Wow, okay, so it has been a minute since I've uploaded to YouTube. My last video was like in October or August. August? Well, I mean, the last vloggy thing was in August, but this one's in October. I don't really have an excuse. I've kind of been making a lot of code art recently. I've been really into this book here. Generative Design, highly recommend it. Great book, really is a phenomenal read. It's very well designed, it's very pretty. The pages are really thick and pretty nice. Um, but honestly, I just kind of wanted to get back into the game and tell some stories. I've been feeling a lot of pressure to kind of make uh, some more content. And I, I just, I don't know, I, I want to do something a bit more intense than writing, but at the same time, um, I just was, I was so sick of editing last time, and I can talk about that in another time. But this video, I want to talk about processing. I want to talk about creating your own creative code, um, building your own stuff with creative code. So let's just jump into it. Today we're going to be talking about inspiration. The way I formatted this video in my head is that I want to talk about three different tips that you can be using uh, for your own processing sketches to kind of like help you. Um, so the first tip that I want to uh, suggest is just to start writing. I think when I first started with processing, I would get stuck just looking at that blank editor for like a long time and just not knowing what words to put down or what's going to actually, uh, what code to put down to make something beautiful. I would see a lot of kind of like really nice generative pieces and kind of get overwhelmed by the idea that I wouldn't be able to create those types of works. Um, and honestly, you know, motivation is followed by action. So the best way to just get over that is just to start writing. Um, write void setup, write your, your void draw method, um, draw some lines and some circles and squares and, and stuff like that. And then soon as you know it, it's actually going to be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, there's also a code completion library that I use a lot. Um, and if you hit control plus space on Windows or Mac, uh, it'll pop up all the options that you have for uh, an auto-completed letter. So this will allow you to kind of create um, more things than you thought that you knew because you'll be introduced to more methods in the library. So it's kind of like you want to lower your space of creativity by starting with anything um, but then you also want to see the options that you have with the creativity so you want to start off by just drawing lines or just drawing circles um, and then build from there as opposed to having a full image in your head and working from there so my second tip is to get inspiration from Pinterest and Instagram I mainly use Instagram I don't really use Pinterest at all um, but Instagram is great because if you look at the hashtag creative coding and the hashtag processing um, hashtags, then you can find a lot of really cool generative design work to kind of inspire you and set you in the right direction. Um, most people are really helpful too on these hashtags, so you can reach out to them directly um, and comment and say, hey, like, how did you make this? This is really cool. Um, how did you do this? I would really love some tips. And usually they'll actually get back to you. Um, the generative art community is really big into open source and sharing, so uh, it's a great way just to kind of like get started and meet other people in the community. A third tip here is to sketch on paper before you start coding. Um, it doesn't have to be a good sketch, uh, and as a matter of fact, let me show you some of mine. Let me see here. It's probably going to be pretty embarrassing. Here's a great example of some sketches. So like these are sketches that I was using for um, an idea when I was trying to create uh, the Galakrond eye from um, Hearthstone. I wanted to use Bezier curves to see if I could make that and see if I could generate eyes randomly across the screen. Um, but like when you sketch things out, you actually get to start to see the components that make the thing. So it's really handy to not just jump into coding because if you just jump into coding, you're going to get stuck a lot. You're going to make methods that you don't actually end up needing. Uh, so it's better just to kind of like have a pseudo code idea of when you're going in. Um, and I mean, a lot of these tips are kind of like assume that you have a little bit of processing knowledge. This isn't a purely beginner's processing tip. This is kind of like what, to get you out of a rut, but also to help you kind of get started with a daily habit of building um, sketches and processing uh, because it's a very powerful tool. And I think if you use it for a while, you'll make some really cool stuff. So uh, I'm really excited to see what you do. Um, if you do make anything, tag me in my Instagram at underscore Bramsey's 
Um, and I'm going to start making more YouTube videos again. Possibly, maybe, sure, sort of, after I get my camera back. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. Till next time.